Hello everyone, very good evening to all of you. My name is Harshwardhan Singh and today we are going to discuss the another aspect of medieval India that our lecture series is related to the approach to modern uh, approach to medieval history. In the optional Vijayanagar is also an important aspect in medieval India. If you go through the paper then you will get to know one question definitely UPS is going to ask. What type of question? Maybe they can ask the question in the compulsory that is the question number 5. Maybe it is of like short essay question or maybe they are going to ask the comprehensive question. But every year, every year the Vijayanagar question can be asked for 10 marks or 15 marks and it is very important 10 and 15 it is a compulsory that means 10 marks is a compulsory question you have to solve it. So just imagine you have to read just a Vijayanagar all the aspects of it and there is a guarantee of asking this question. So this is an important aspect in the South India Vijayanagar ok. So for discussing the Vijayanagar first we are going to discuss the question as I told you already. First we are going to uh, discuss the question, what exactly the question is, from where it is asked and then we are going to discuss the concepts of it and finally we are going to discuss the how we are going to solve this question, clear? So for example, <coughs> not for example, it is a question, discuss how Vijayanagar empire became the cultural capital of South India or South. This question asked for 10 marks in previous years discuss how Vijayanagar empire became the cultural capital of south. So of course this question is from which area everyone of course medieval in the medieval we focused on the two aspect one of course north India in the north India you know we focused on Delhi Sultanate then we focused on Mughals clear. These are the two most important topic. Then the south. In the south, the three important aspect. First, of course, Maratha. This Maratha is basically we are going to consider in between south and north because you know the Deccan plateau it is in between that. So if we consider it in the south. So Maratha is an important topic. The another important topic is Chola. And third important topic is Vijayanagar. Clear? In south one more uh, one more uh, kingdom was there known as Bahmani kingdom but when you consider the num the pattern of UPSC the UPSC love Vijayanagar most they are asking more number of question from Vijayanagar okay Bahmani they are going to ask the question related to the Bahmani or the conflict between Bahmani ruler and Vijayanagar and the successive states of Bahmani kingdom but Vijayanagar is the most important and so many foreign travelers also visited during the time of Vijayanagar and they talk about the glory of Vijayanagar, they talk about the uh, king and their justice and everything about the Vijayanagar. So in South India Vijayanagar is one of the important aspect ok. So it is the case so Vijayanagar is a part of medieval India in South it is there clear. Now what? What should be our approach while reading Vijayanagar? Approach to read or approach to study Vijayanagar. First, of course, everybody now you are quite smart enough, you know what exactly it is. You are going to talk about the origin. In the origin, of course, the background. Background. The background of formation of Vijayanagar is very simple. <coughs> Vijayanagar background is there as everybody knew about this fact that is Hariyar and Bukka were the founders of it. Who were they? Who were they? Initially they were serving, they were the Nayaks, they were serving in the different principalities in South Hoysalas were there and all. Later on when Delhi Sultanate during the time of Muhammad bin Tughlaq when they attacked, they captured these two men and when there was a revolt broke out in the South, these people were sent there to suppress that and now they got the opportunity as the Delhi Sultanate was not that strong enough. 
and they cannot control this deep south from the north. So, they got the opportunity and they established their control and they established a Vijayanagar empire. Vijayanagar empire it is not the case that this empire is ruled by one dynasty. No, there are three uh, sorry there are total four dynasty ruled there as everybody knew about the most important person Harihar and Bukka. The another important ruler is Devrai first and Devrai second. Devrai second was the strongest or most powerful ruler of Vijayanagar and the last most important ruler was most important ruler Krishna Dev Rai. So, they were from different dynasty and all. So, we have to study that. So, we have to discuss the background clear background or the origin for it. Then we have to different dynasties background is important different dynasties are also important. Next important aspect in the background one more thing I just mentioned about then you should mention about one more thing in the background and that we have to take into consideration that is Delhi Sultanat and weakening of Delhi Sultanat in the southern area that is most important thing. Next important thing after that next important thing of course politico administrative system. In the political administrative system, the most important aspect is divergent of views. In some books, it is mentioned because if you want to read the optional history, then you have to read this subject in detail. So, in one book, you will not get everything, but there are different historians, they presented their views regarding the origin, regarding the political administrative system of Vijayanagar, every empire. In Vijayanagar also, it is the thing that is the divergent view, means one view in divergent view was, it is a blend of centralized and autonomous area blend of means in few area there is a complete centralization in few area there is a autonomy given to that clear this autonomous areas were under the Nayaks it was a one point of view in the history what should be the political socio uh, sorry political administrative structure next important aspect is related to the segmentary state. In this state, it is just like that king is having control over means uh, we can mention the direct control. The king is having control over this area direct control and in the peripheral area king is having very lesser control and this control is known as ritual control or ritual sovereignty. What exactly the ritual sovereignty is that? Ritual sovereignty is very simple concept that is the king does not have direct control over this area. These areas actually or the ruler of this area they are paying tribute to the king. They accept the sovereignty of the king. They are paying the tribute but this area is completely autonomous or kind of independent and ritual sovereignty means every year they are going to pay tribute to the king so that they can be a free independent. Mahanavami is one of the concept and in during the Mahanavami everybody is going to attend the ritual which is there in the capital and capital of Vijayanagar empire was Vijayanagar clear Hampi is the present name of that place but Vijay, capital of Vijayanagar was Vijayanagar Ab aap soch rahe honge, kaisa, kaisa. so you know Mexico Mexico is a country Mexico is a city as well common sense good so, it is the one of the other aspect related to that. Then one more aspect that is war state. War state is another aspect of Vijayanagar empire. Another aspect is conquer state. So, so many aspects in the political administrative structure. One aspect is given that is the village Vijayanagar political administration is divided into provinces 
the provinces are divided into districts and districts are divided into sub districts and sub districts are divided into villages. Clear? So, these areas are known as this provinces known as Mandal, provinces are known as Mandal, districts are known as Nadu, Nadu, these are known as Mandals, villages, of course, Gram is known as villages, and this subdivision is known as Thala. So, this is the kind of means it is acceptable thing, yes, Vijayanagar whole empire is divided into four fold that means provinces are there provinces are divided into district districts are divided into sub districts sub districts are divided into villages clear so this is the politico administrative structure of this divergent views of it next important different offices are there means it is a divergent views are basically talking about the centralization or decentralization form of the government that is the most important thing. Then various offices were also there, clear? Whether the one more aspect is there, whether the Vijayanagar is a military state, whether the village uh, uh, Vijayanagar is a Hindu state, means it is said that some of the historians also claim that it is the resurgent of Hinduism in the South India in the form of Vijayanagar. Was it the case? So, we are going to discuss each and every aspect in detail. So, do not worry about that. So, these are the divergent views in the political administration. So, we have to take into consideration. One important person in the South India which played a role in mentioning this and the name of that person is Nilkant Shastri. Nilkant Shastri is one of the historian. He mentions so many theories related to the South Indian Empire. One is the Chola and another is the Vijayanagar. Clear? So now what after that? After that we are going to talk about society. What kind of society Vijayanagar was having? In the society, first of course the most important aspect that Vijayanagar society is a continuation of the past means the society which was started developing during the time of Pallava it is also known as the Aryanization or the Brahmanization of society which was started during the time of Pallavas, it was continued during the Cholas and evolved during the period of Vijayanagar. So, everywhere in India, if you know that there is a fourfold society, in most part of India, fourfold society, except there are two provinces where it does not have, the one is Bengal, the another is in South India, where the twofold societies are there. Everywhere the fourfold society is a basically horizontal division of the society. Those who do not know this thing, so I just want to mention the Varna system. The Varna system is like that, Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. Everybody knew about that. But what exactly in the case of Vijayanagar? In the Vijayanagar society is divided into two, twofold society. This is a fourfold. Twofold society, it is very simple. That is Brahmin and rest means directly it is considered as a Shudra, clear? So, it is a direct operation from the upper caste over the lower caste. It was a very clear idea and that is why you know that this uh, movement, which movement? Basically, a, the caste reform movement are very popular in Bengal and South India. It is because of this factor. We have to discuss this in modern India, but at least I am going to give you the some uh, insights of it. Okay, it was there. So, what exactly the condition during the Vijayanagar? In Vijayanagar Empire, the society was divided into this twofold, and there are two communities played an important role Walangai and Idangai. Walangai means basically those who are attached with the agriculture sector, and Idangai is those who are basically dealing with the manufacturing sector. Basically, all tradesmen, craftsmen, weavers, barbers are part of this Idangai and Valangai. This Valangais were dominating this Vijayanagar system for a long time, but during the time of uh, Sadashiv Rai, Idangais also rose into prominence. And why it is so? Because the urbanization trend was there, and you know, in urbanization, what played most important role? 
trade played an important role and trade gives ample of money and this ample of money became the factor to rise of the idan guys and they played an important role in the society as well so this society division we should know about that what exactly the so basically in society division of society we should know okay it is the one of the aspect then the second most important aspect everywhere is present that is the role of women in the society role of women in the society we are so fortunate that vijayanagar empire is a one of the representative example where the women played most important role that is women attached with the literature activities they are learned one along with that there are references of women artisan there are uh, references of women as a bodyguard there are references as a women as a musician as well so basically enlightened phase for the women is present during this time the societal structure of women is quite upgraded during the time of vijayanagar empire so you should know about that one more aspect is there even the women are related with the prostitution and prostitution was also recognized institution at that time clear so so many aspects are there with the vijayanagar empire so it is a one of the aspect of then we should know about the rule or the condition of peasants during that time that is the one of the important aspect whether the condition of peasant were worst or whether the condition of peasant was good during that time so you should know about it clear in the society these are the aspects related to the society clear okay now what now the another important aspect we have to take into consideration and that is economy most important agriculture that is the land revenue land revenue policy so you should know about the land revenue policy of vijayanagar whether they are going to charge half whether they are going to charge one third what type of economy was there whether this economy was totally dependent on agriculture that means it was a agrarian economy or it was dependent on the other aspect as well so we should know about that and how much amount of uh, tax land revenue tax was there so we should know about that then the another important aspect of economy that is trade and commerce trade and commerce is also important aspect of it one of the important factor that played a role into flourishing the trade and commerce and first uh, in that one of the factor is first in that stable government stability was there in the vijayanagar empire as though i said the dynasty changed but every dynasty gave stability and this stability was very helpful for flourishing the trading activities in that area that is one of the aspects second important aspect and that is the role played by temples yes the role played by temple and temple are basically so many places are there you know chidambaram is a place in south india madurai is a place in south india and these are the places or these were the centers important center for economic activity these centers played an important role so we should know about the contribution of temple contribution of temple in the economic activities clear that is the economy then next important thing as we have discussed this thing we have to mention about the art and architecture art and architecture yes everyone if you go through the previous year question paper even in prelims also the questions are related to art and architecture of vijayanagar empire and in the mains examination every time the question is there and the chances of asking question from this area art and architecture is more because it is a one of the best example of temple architecture in the south india this art and architecture it does not means it is related to the temple only art and architecture it related to the literature it related to 
the another aspect like painting music sculpture and temple clear so so many aspects are there so we should know about this art and architecture what i mentioned i don't have that much space but still i am going to mention we are going to mention about the temple architecture then we are going to mention about painting then we are going to mention about the music then we are going to mention about the sculpture etc temple is a one of the important aspect and it is having several dimension and we have to take into consideration means what were the what we can say uh, why vijayanagar temples are so important how it is it, uh, different from the chola temples why we considered vijayanagar temples reach to the zenith in the south india because vijayanagar temples are basically the collaboration of so many types of temple activities which was going on in the south india chola of course the most important inspiration from chola temple hoysalas were there kadambas were there yes so so many small states also inspired even the badami so they influence the vijayanagar art and vijayanagar temple architecture when we considered it it is having two aspect one is of course whatever the architecture in vijayanagar one is a religious aspect virupaksha temple in the hampi or virupaksha temple of vijayanagar is a very famous it is a world uh, sorry unesco's world heritage site it is there there are so many one is uh, chenna keshava temple in a belur that is one of the important example of it so religious architecture was important but another aspect is that that secular architecture was also prominent in vijayanagar if you go through hampi then you will get to know the so many things were well, uh, they are the representative of secular architecture for example one is a lotus uh, tank or lake the another important is queen's bath that is also important queen's palace so so many things are there representative of secular architecture clear so religious and secular architecture are there and temple architecture is one of the prominent feature of it clear so now we mention about this aspect of it clear okay so how many points are there i just want to first we mention about origin second we mention about political administration then fourth so th third society fourth economy fifth art architecture now the sixth one in the sixth one this is a very interesting feature and so many times in prelims and in mains such or this question repeated or upsc love to ask question from this area that is foreign travelers so many foreign travelers visited the vijayanagar empire and they gave the account of vijayanagar empire what exactly the vijayanagar empire is how vijayanagar empire is big and all so many means what we can say um, things are written related to the vijayanagar and they are very helpful for us to reconstruct the history the most important is nunis nunis was a portuguese traveler and he traveled during the time of devrai second he mentioned about the king he mentioned about the uh, dominance of king that is what he said that the king of sri lanka king of burma even the malay they are paying tribute to vijayanagar king that is there the second important is the in it uh, italian traveler was there nicolo conti nicolo conti also talked about the city administration he talked about the planning he talked about the king then the one more is abdul razak abdul razak was basically came to india as an ambassador during the period of devrai second abdul razak also talked about the city planning and the peace peace was one of the important italian traveler he mentioned about the great qualities of vijayanagar empire great ruler and even he talk about the vijayanagar empire or the emperor loves the justice clear and even they compare 
they compare the Vijayanagar is the largest city just like a Rome means in the east. So this these foreign travelers gave lots of information related to Vijayanagar. One more person is there, Farishta is there, one more person, Barbosa is there. So so many travelers visited Vijayanagar Empire and it really helped us to recollect or reconstruct the history during that time. So foreign traveler is also the important aspect of Vijayanagar Empire. Then is there anything left? Um, Temple architecture, uh, we already discussed in art and culture. Then the last aspect is related to decline. Sorry, second last, decline. So in the decline, of course, we have to focus on the factors. In the factors, I told you in the last lecture as well, every time factors are same. Internal factors, external factor. In the internal factors, inherent problems were there, socio, political, economic factors, internal entrings you have to mention, whatever it may be. So you have to discuss that internal factors, clear? Social tension you have to say. Then external factors. External factors in Vijayanagar Empire is basically continuous fight with Bahmanis and the successor Bahmani state. That is the one of the reason and the immediate factor of decline of Vijayanagar Empire is Battle of Talikota. The Battle of Talikota was, uh, if I am not wrong, then it was there in 1565. The Battle of Talikota and why it was so? Because these Vijayanagar rulers were engaging these Deccanian states, Bijapur, Golkanda and Ahmednagar in such a manner that these Deccanian state or the successor Bahmani state were fighting with each other and every time they played a key role. But once they realized that the real problem is Vijayanagar, not the problem within us. So what they did? They gathered together the combined forces of Ahmednagar, Bijapur and Golkanda defeated Vijayanagar and it was basically death blow for the Vijayanagar empire and the process of decline there. That is the immediate factor and finally disintegration of Vijayanagar empire. Clear? So you should know about this and the last important factor that is the legacy. Legacy of Vijayanagar Empire, the contribution of Vijayanagar Empire or the impact of Vijayanagar Empire in the South India, contribution of Vijayanagar Empire. So these aspect we have to study when we are going to discuss the topic related to Vijayanagar. Clear? Yes everyone, is that clear? Whatever we have discussed. So remember whenever you are going to read one book, maybe you will not get the approach. Yes, but reading books is important. If you refer to one or two book then it is always a better for the any topic in history optional clear okay now we are going to come back to our question question is very simple and it is related to cultural capital of south one aspect i forgot to mention I am sorry for that, one aspect I forgot to mention and that is related to literature. In art and architecture, one aspect is literature. In literature, there are so many Vijayanagar king gave importance to the indigenous languages. Means what was the case before uh, Cholas or before uh, that, they focused on mainly on the Sanskrit language. Most of the rulers focused on Sanskrit language. But the Chola time, the Tamil also get, uh, get a prominence. But the most important contribution of Vijayanagar is the development of literature of Kannada, Telugu, Tamil and Sanskrit. These three native languages played an important role. Why it is so? Because if you know the Vijayanagar empire, length and breadth of Vijayanagar empire, it is there in the Tamil area, it is there in the Kannada area and it is there in the Telugu area. So the three languages played most important role and king also gave patronage to these languages along with the Sanskrit. That is the most important. Even Krishna Dev Rai was a well versed in all these languages. So that is the representative example. Vijayanagar empire is important for that. And one more aspect I forgot to mention that Bahmani and Vijayanagar were having continuous fight with each other. 
continuous and why they were continuous fighting with each other first of all they were the successor states of delhi sultanate after weakening of delhi sultanate they consider means they established their rule basically bahmanis were the on the northern side the bahmani empire is on northern side and vijayanagar in the southern southern area so there are only three areas where they were having constant fight and these are basically borders of that first area is basically tungabhadra dwab the second area is basically krishna godavari delta and the third area is very important and that is marathwada these are the only three areas where they have a continuous fight with each other clear even the successor states of bahmani were having the fight over this area one small area is also there and that is related to goa and konkan in these two areas also the fight was there but these are the three prominent area where the conflict was going on so one more aspect i just want to share with you as we mentioned the view related to the hindu state yes everyone we mentioned whether vijayanagar is a hindu state remember one thing there is no such a concept of religion in any way religion is a one of the factor which played important role in dominance and all but once you assume the power most of the rulers were basically very pragmatic very secular they use religion whatever may be not in india i am talking about the worldwide concept they just use as religion to grab the power once they grab the power they started the policy which are benef uh, which are beneficial for the state only so in vijayanagar there are so many historians say that it is the resurgent or reassertion of hindu power in the south was it the same case is it the reality and why they say it so because they were having vijayanagar is having constant fight with the bahmani and successor state is that true if it is the true then you will get to know the example that so many the abdul razak i mentioned the name of this foreign traveler he came to india as a ambassador in the court of devraj second so if vijayanagar represented the hindu state then why any muslim ruler are going to send his ambassador to the court clear the another important aspect that krishna dev rai also recruited the muslims in his army if it is a hindu state why they are going to recruit muslims clear so it is not the case that they were against the muslim For unfortunately or fortunately bahmanis were the muslim that's what they were fighting with them but it is not the case that every time they were fighting with the muslims only there are so many rulers in the orissa gajpati rulers were there where they have the fight they have the conflict even the kalchuris are there in a karnataka area they have the fight with them even the hoysalas were there they have the fight so it is not the case they are fighting with the muslims only they fight with the, all this neighboring state and the aim of that as the word is empire empire is related to the expansion of empire that is the policy of emperor and that's why the conflicts were there the conflict of interest with all the neighboring states and the most important powerful state was a uh, bahmani that's why some historian portrayed it as a resurgence of hindus and all but it is not at all the case now how to deal with this question yes everyone discuss how vijayanagar empire became the cultural capital became the cultural capital so your question is basically focused on the cultural capital means basically in short vijayanagar became the important center in the south for cultural activities so what you are going to consider into culture what things you are going to take into consideration while discussing culture and whatever i said you get the answer of it you definitely get the answer of it whatever i said so how to deal with this question the first first most important thing every time the part 1 is introduction in introduction what you are going to write 
in introduction what you are going to write. Just think about that. Basic information related to Vijayanagar. What you are going to write? For example, in South India during the uh, means 14th century, there was a uh, in the South India during the 14th century there was a rise of Vijayanagar Empire. The successor Vijayanagar uh, dynasty played an important role to give the stability government and also they played an important role in thriving the economy and this resulted into spreading of cultural activities in South India. There are so many foreign travellers also gave information or so many foreign travellers noted the prosperity of Vijayanagar empire. So such kind of introduction is there means you are going to mention that the dynasties rule there they also played an important role in flourishing the state trade and commerce also played an important role and then you are going to mention the foreign travelers and if you know the name then you can mention the name of few for example uh, you are going to mention the Nunis you are going to mention about the Niccolo Conti then you are going to mention about peace Abdul Razak and all so this gave a more strong support to your answer that these foreign travelers will talk about the prosperity of the Vijayanagar empire and cultural aspect is one of the important thing. So such kind of introduction is required. Okay, now what should be the part 2? Part 2 is very simple how we are going to call it as a cultural capital. So in part 1 you mention about the economic prosperity. So there is no need to mention here because here we have focused means part 2 is basically main body part and our focus should be on cultural capital why it is called as cultural capital. So why we mention economic prosperity because remember economic prosperity is if it is not there then it is least possibility that any state is going to flourish as a cultural state because economic prosperity gives advantage or we can say it act as a backbone for cultural development of the state clear so what you are going to mention here how it is known as cultural capital so first a line you are going to mention there there are so many developments in various fields like literature, architecture and other flourished during the time of Vijayanagar and that is why it is considered as a cultural capital of south. So then you are going to explain it. So it is a connecting line between part 1 and part 2. So cultural, so what you are going to mention? You are going to mention about the first aspect literature. In literature, you are going to mention about language that is a Kannada, Telugu, Tamil, Sanskrit. Then you are going to mention about the books and yes, you have to know the name of the books which are written because it is history optional. It is not a GS paper, history optional. So you should know about the name of books written, the most famous books, at least one or two example you can mention about that. And then you are going to mention in the literature king also played an important role. Krishna Dev Rai is a one of the representative example he played an important role in that. He patronaged the, these languages, poets along with that he also uh, he was also the writer of books in these languages. So you are going to mention about that literature. Okay, the next aspect you are going to mention about in the field of <coughs> art you are going to mention about in art painting then you are going to mention about sculpture music and why I mention this because these three things painting music sculpture they developed as an independent art before Vijayanagar it was a part of temple architecture or developed during that but now they are independently developed so you should mention about these art clear next you are going to mention the architecture 
in the architecture you are going to divide into religious in religious you are going to mention about temples and then you are going to mention about the secular in religious temples i mention about the example of virupaksh temple then uh, chenna kesava uh, temple and so many temples are there at least these two uh, i am going to mention right now and in secular architecture you are going to mention the queen's bath then lotus tank you are going to mention about it clear and we have to write some details as well okay so you can write it so now it is a first literature then we mention about the art and architecture then after that that's it that's it no you can mention one more aspect and that is related to the role of temples in development of these things so you can mention where is that okay first first second third fourth rule of temple as i mentioned earlier rule of temple is important it acted as a trade center but also rule of temple is important in flourishing the cultures so you have to mention the aspect of it how rule of temples played an important role in development of culture clear then next important thing you are going to mention about rule of king don't you think so without the rule of king this cultural capital concept is irrelevant or impossible so you should know about the contribution of the king and what type of contribution what type of environment they provided means the kind of society kind of system they created which is favorable for rise of cultural center so you should know about the role of king so these five points are sufficient which is going to cover the aspect related to cultural capital now what should be the last and the part Three part three is basically the conclusion part. As this is the ten mark question, that's why, and it is a very short essay question, short type of essay we have to write. So this question is not a large question like fifteen mark question, twenty mark uh, question. So we have to write in means according to the need of or according to the demand of the question. so this question we have we are going to sum up like this part 1 introduction part 2 these five parts and part 3 conclusion what you have to write in conclusion question was discuss so your conclusion should be the summary of whatever it is what you are going to write in conclusion in the conclusion you are going to mention about the vijayanagar empire which was there for more than two centuries which provided a, or which played an important role in the development of art architecture and all this art architecture society during the medieval times in south india and with this flourishing development it is known as the cultural capital of south india a kind of simple conclusion you are going to mention that's it without conclusion your answer is incomplete so at least you have to mention this part yes everyone so i hope whatever we have discussed now it is clear to you if you are having any question any query you can ask yes there is no means there is there should not be any hesitation while asking the question yes so that's all for today's session thank you very much for your valuable time See you soon.